Good morning, everybody. The intention of the Mass is for the work of Cafford, and we also celebrate the memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, priest and doctor of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose untold mercy, blessed Thomas Aquinas preached the good news of the unfathomable riches of Christ. Grant that through his intercession, we may grow in knowledge of you, and bearing fruit in every good work, faithfully walk in your presence in accord with the truth of the gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. At the turn of the year, the time when kings go campaigning, David sent Joab and with him his own guards and the whole of Israel. They massacred the Ammonites and laid siege to Rabbah. David, however, remained in Jerusalem. It happened towards the evening when David had risen from his couch and was strolling on the palace roof, that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David made inquiries about this woman and was told, Why, that is Bathsheba, Eliam's daughter, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and, she ha and had her brought. She came to him and he slept with her. She then went home again. The woman conceived and sent word to David, I am with child. Then David sent Joab a message, send me Uriah the Hittite, whereupon Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah came into his presence, David asked after Joab and the army and how the war was going. David then said to Uriah, go down to your house and enjoy yourself. Uriah left the palace and was followed by a present from the king's table. Uriah, however, slept by the palace door with his master's bodyguard and did not go down to his house. This was reported to David. Uriah, they said, did not go down to his house. The next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. In the evening, Uriah went out and lay on his couch with his master's bodyguard, but he did not go down to his house. Next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it to Uriah. In the letter, he wrote, Station Uriah in the thick of the fight and then fall back behind him so that he may be struck down and die. Joab then besieging the town, posted Uriah in a place where he knew where there was fierce fighters. The men of the town sallied out and engaged Joab. The army suffered casualties, including some of David's bodyguard, and Uriah the Hittite was killed too. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. 
Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O oh, wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. My offences, truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done. Have mercy on us, Lord, who we have sinned. That you may be justified when you give sentence, and be without reproach when you judge. O oh, see, in guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. Have mm. mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Make me hear rejoicing and gladness, that the bones that you have crushed may thrill. From my sins turn away your face, and blot out all my guilt. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Make me grasp the way of your precepts, and I will muse on your wonders. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws seed on the land. Night and day while he sleeps, when he's awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How he does not know. Of its own accord, the lamb produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, what can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It is like a mustard seed, which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet once it is sown, it grows into the biggest shrub of them all and puts out big branches so that the beds of the air can shelter in its shade. Using many parables like these, he spoke the word to them so far as they were capable of understanding it, he would not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's first reading from the second book of Samuel tells a murky tale from David's past. Is there any other Old Testament leader described in such words and all way? Maybe that is what makes David such a fascinating personality. It is easy to identify with him as a weak person who improves with time. It is just as strange how the seed which falls into the ground becomes stalks of wheat, providing grain and bread. Yet such just as wheat provides bread and the mustard seed grows to provide shade, so the story of David tells us that God does not give up on us or lose patience with us. We can be converted and renewed as David was, and God will fulfill his promises to us. Sometimes our best efforts seem to bear little fruit. We can get into a gloomy frame of mind and feel that we have little to show for our lives so far. But on the contrary, we might be achieving more good than we realize. Jesus taught that even a little effort can go a long way that seems to be the message of the two parables in today's gospel. As we remember St. Thomas Aquinas today, there's a little note here about him. Born in 1224, Thomas was a Dominican friar 
who became one of the most important Christian philosophers and theologians. And for those who have studied philosophy, he's famous, which is five proofs for the existence of God. Anybody who has studied philosophy has heard something about Thomas Aquinas and his proofs for the existence of God. He's known as the angelic doctor, and his greatest work is called the Summa Theologica. It's widely used today. He is the patron of Catholic schools. You sent your disciples to preach the gospel to every nation. Bless those men and women who devote their lives to preaching the gospel today. We also remember the millions of people murdered in the Holocaust under the Nazi persecution and in the genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and Darfur. May we resolve to learn lessons from the past and create a safer and better future. Lord, hear us. We ask Our Lady to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed to thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice we should gladly present on the feast of the blessed Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts to pray by sending thy spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, to get out Francis our Pope and Mark our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to request to return our life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy you may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should tent under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 Body of Let us pray. May your holy gifts which we have received fill us with life, O Lord, so that we who rejoice in commemorating St. Thomas Aquinas may also profit from his example of apostolic virtue through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.